Hey everyone, Mr. Norgren here. Our ninth lesson is titled Content Aware. And you're going to be learning how to use the Content Aware functions as well as the Content Aware Move tool. This aspect of Photoshop is truly remarkable and I'm also going to be showing you a little bit about rhythm and movement. Here is our list of terms. We have the Content Aware Delete as well as the Content Aware Move tool. and then content aware scale, and finally the principle of rhythm and movement. All right, here we go. All right, uh, go ahead and choose File Open from the menu bar or press Command-O, the keyboard shortcut. This time navigate to the Macintosh HD and then the Video Lessons Images and go to the Slot Canyon. You can also download this image from the video description. Now in the menu bar, choose Image Duplicate. Click OK. Close the original. And then save this next one in your documents. Last name video lessons. And this one is titled Last Name. Oops. Let me take off caps lock. Last Name. VL9 we're on now. And then click Save. I'm going to click OK here. OK, next what you're going to do is choose the zoom tool, letter Z, and zoom in at the, on the girl at the bottom of the image here. And then you're going to switch to the lasso tool, and you're going to draw a selection around her, leaving a little bit of an extra gap around her. And just make that kind of quickly. I'm not going to spend too much time with it. Just a fairly quick selection, doesn't have to be too perfect for this sample. And get back to the beginning there. So now that I have a selection here, uh, make sure that there are no extra layers, it's just a background layer. And if you're using a different image, make sure it's just a background layer image. And the next step, watch this, this is really cool. Go ahead and press delete on the keyboard, and a window will pop up. In the little drop down menu, choose content aware and then click OK, and wait a second, and like magic, she disappears. That's pretty amazing. Go ahead and press Command-D to deselect, and let's zoom out and take a look at that. It's like she was never there. If you want to do some detail work, you can get the uh, some of the healing tools or the cloning tools to uh, clean up some of the areas and make it kind of blend a little bit better. Okay, next one, that is the Content-Aware Delete function. And that comes in handy whenever you want to get rid of someone or something. You can also do this by hand with the clone stamp tool, but I think Photoshop does a pretty good job. Okay, next choose the Content Aware Move tool. That is one of the J tools. And if you click and hold on the tool over here, it's with all the other healing brush and patch tools. Uh, make sure it is the Content Aware Move, the uh, two arrows that form an X. Okay, now duplicate your background layer. You can do that with Command J. And then you're going to draw a selection around the boy, leaving a little space, just like you did with the girl. So I don't need the selection tool. I need this content aware move tool. So go ahead and do the same kind of thing and leave just a little bit of space. This takes a little trial and error and some practice to make it just right, but I'll just do it quickly to show you how this function works. Okay, that's good enough there. Okay, before you move him a little, you have a couple options. So just watch for a minute and then we will do it together. The first one is mode up at the top uh, tool options up here. And you could either have it on move or extend. So we'll start with move and I'll show you what it does and then we'll try the other ones. So if I move him over a little bit and then click the check mark here, it basically moves him. Let me undo that now, Command Z. If I choose extend and I click and drag him and then press the check mark, it duplicates him. So we've got uh, a clone of the person. And there are a couple other things that you can do here. Let me undo that. 
Uh, if you hold your cursor over the uh, word structure up at the top here, or color, it will describe what those are. So I'll put my mouse there for a second. And that adjusts how strictly the source structure is preserved. And then the color, this one adjusts how much the source color can be modified. So a lot of times it's just uh, trial and error playing around with those two. For now, I will have the structure at 7 and the color at 1. Okay, lastly, you can check sample all layers and then transform on drop, depending on what you want to use there. And I'll show you what the transform does. So now I'd go ahead and just move him to the left a little bit, like this. And then actually, you know what I want to do? Command Z that. Well, let me check it first. Let me check that Command Z. I don't want to extend him, I want to move him. So this is where you're going to actually copy this. So have it on move, structure at 7, color at 1, and then you could have that unchecked, and you could check the transform on drop. So I'll move them a little bit, and you will do this too, and then click the check mark, and uh, we've got him moved. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and deselect right now, and then we could uh, zoom out a little bit and take a look at that. And right now that looks... Uh, like it's done a pretty good job, especially if I zoom out, it looks great. If you want to zoom in and make it look perfect, that's where you could use some of the uh, healing tools and get rid of any like edges around here that doesn't look quite perfect and make that look good. Okay, now we're going to try the content aware scale. This one's pretty cool too. So let me command zero this. Choose the crop tool, it's the letter C, and then drag the left handle out a little bit, maybe to about there and then the right handle out a little bit to about there, and then press return. Now choose the rectangular marquee tool, that's the letter M, and then select part of the left side of the image. Let me command minus this, show, make it a little smaller. So I'll get this marquee tool, select part of this left side here, and then up at the menu bar at the top of your screen, click on edit and go down to content aware scale, and then click and drag on the left handle here, and it just stretches out the image to the edge there. Now press return, and then command D to deselect. And that looks pretty realistic. Okay, we're going to do that uh, same thing for the other side. So marquee tool, and I will select the uh, right side here. Maybe get a little bit of the water too. And then once again, up at the menu bar at the top, edit content aware scale, and then drag this out a little bit. And press return, and then command D to deselect. Okay, so if you're a photojournalist, you never want to alter reality this much, but it is helpful for many reasons, such as adding text, which is what we'll do in our last step. So choose the type tool, letter T, and then select an appropriate size font and color. I'm using uh, Arial at, uh, let's go up to 60 point, and white for the color. So I'll go ahead and uh, click right up here and type in a couple words, like go, yeah, let's go caps lock on this one. Go and then take, and I could, uh, here's a neat little thing too, you could uh, move away from the text a little bit, so it turns on the move tool, and I can move the text in place before I apply it. So that works right there. I could do the check mark here, and then I could type in a couple more words at the bottom here. And you could probably guess what I'm gonna say. Go take a hike. And I can move that into place. And then uh, press the check mark, or I could just choose a different tool like the move tool. Okay, so now that I've got the text in there, um, I've got another skill to show you that you should probably have by now. It's how to convert a PSD file into a JPEG. So if you wanted this to be a, a JPEG that you could share with other people or put on the internet or transfer to a phone, anything like that, go up to Image and then Duplicate. Click OK. And now we have another copy here. In the Layers palette over here, up in the top right, there's these tiny three little lines. If you click on those three little lines, and go down to flatten image. That puts all the layers into one. And now when you press Command S, 
you can uh, look at the bottom of the format down here. Usually it's on Photoshop, but if you put it on JPEG, it'll be a JPEG. And you can save this uh, into your video lessons if you want to call this uh, VL9 I don't know, B or something. You could put in another letter or lowercase letter B and then click Save. So you could do that too. Um, oh yeah, one more thing. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned we would learn about the art principle of rhythm and movement. So basically this principle relates to how the viewer's eye moves about your image. If there are repeated elements such as color, line, or texture, your eye will bounce around finding these similarities. So most people start on the left side of an image. Oh, let me click OK here. Most people start on the left side of an, of an image. So in this case, my eye is caught with the white text here. And then uh, what happens is my eye jumps over to the uh, bright uh, white here, and then it follows the line down the canyon, and it gets caught by the white shirt of the boy, this little detail here. And then finally my, moves, my eye moves over to the white words at the bottom right, and then my eye stays in the image a little longer, checking out all the different lines, textures, and color details of the rocks and water. So as a photographer or any type of visual artist, this is your goal, to capture the attention of your audience and then to hold it long enough for them to appreciate your work and perhaps pay some money for it. Hey, nice work. As you can see, the content aware delete, move, and scale functions are very powerful in Photoshop and helpful. Stay tuned for a slideshow of images with rhythm and movement. And if you want to try to get this principle of art in your photographs, just try to look for areas of repeated art elements, such as line, color, or texture. Thanks, and have a great day. And don't forget, present, professional, and polite. Thank you.